I'm presenting this because that it has the uh, liver and the other structures too. So uh, let me uh, give you a little bit of uh, a guideline how you look at the specimen if it is pretty whole body is intact. So whenever you do, uh, it's worthwhile to use uh, your uh, left hand as a diaphragm. So the heart is uh, sitting here. Uh, they actually below the uh, my hand, the liver, and the uh, thorax here. But anyway, if you are given the uh, heart, so the first thing you need to look at, if the lungs are in the same place, look at uh, the lobation of the lung. So here in the right side, you have your lower lobe and the middle lobe and upper lobe. You have your trilobe, the right lung, and then on the other side, you have your uh, the left lower lobe and the left upper lobe. There are two lobes, so you have your trilobe, the right lung, and bilobe, the left lung. To confirm that, if you're, it, the airway is intact like this, like this, and turn the uh, specimen around, and then look at that from behind. And then you will have uh, this view. Okay, so you have your airway coming down. So this is the uh, right side of the specimen, and this is the left side of the specimen. You have your airway coming. This is the right main bronchus. This is the left main bronchus. You can see right upper lower bronchus very high, and the left upper lower bronchus here. So the length between the right main bronchus and left main bronchus is usually two to one, and the and the statistically it is it should be over 1.5 to one. So it is asymmetric. And then can I borrow one? So. And then uh, the right pulmonary artery is here. Usually what happens is that right pulmonary artery comes backward between the right upper lobar bronchus and intermediate bronchus here. Right pulmonary artery should come in this way. But however, on the left side, you can see left uh, pulmonary artery is above and uh, the uh, upper lobar bronchus here. So this is called epibronchial pulmonary artery. This is called hip bronchial pulmonary artery, which is characteristic of right pulmonary artery and characteristic of left pulmonary artery. Okay. So, and then uh, the, we should have the, and then uh, the next is that here uh, coming to the systemic venous return. So, you have your right atrium here, right atrial morphology, having pectinate muscles everywhere, and right superior vena cava comes down to the right atrium here, and then inferior vena cava goes to here, and then I can see there is the one atrial septal defect here in the floor, okay? Going to the left side, atrial appendage, so here is the small left atrial appendage. Uh, actually, atrial appendage, can you see the atrial appendage really? So, yes. So the atrial appendage is open, but very tiny around here. But inside the left atrial appendage, left atrium, I don't see any opening coming here except for the only opening to uh, the left atrium is actually the ASD, the FAST. Okay, so wait a second. This is the atrial appendage now. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, so. Is that the really the atrial appendage? Let me go to here. Okay, go to, let's go to back to the left, the right atrium. Okay. I'm beginning to lose my orientation. Okay. So this should be the atrial septal defect. Can you go to the other side? Is it the left atrium? Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, left atrium and this is the atrial septal defect seen from the left side, okay? So coming back to the back of the heart, so let me take this one, 
vertical position. Okay. So you can see that um, the orientation now is quite straightforward. This is the left side, uh, right side, and then this is the left side. And all pulmonary veins make a confluence and it's all completely twisted. Okay, here we go. So what you have is that you know, all pulmonary veins make a confluence and then there is the uh, very vertical vein coming down. Uh, this should be the diaphragm to the liver. And then if you look at the liver from behind, this is the right lobe of the liver. This is the left lobe of the liver. There is a very big uh, fissure here. This is the um, fissure for ligamentum teres, which is the uh, umbilical vein should they have come here, and then there should be ligamentum venosum here toward the IVC. And then uh, you have your gallbladder here, and then this is the area where inferior vena cava comes down. So in the liver morphology, it is called the H-shaped uh, uh, configuration. You have gallbladder and inferior vena cava in one plane, and then ligamentum teres and ligamentum venosum in the other plane, and there is a connection through the uh, uh, the the left portal vein. Am I correct, Dr. So? Yeah. So in this case, that what it is is that uh, here is the liver. There is a venous confluence. This is a, the actually anatomically left pulmonary the left portal vein, and this is the actually uh, closed umbilical vein here. So total anomalous pulmonary venous connection to the left portal vein here. But in this case, one mystery I they have is that. It should have your ligamentum venosum here. I tried to find out again and again, but I was not able to find the ligamentum venosum here. So closed. Mm -hmm. Closed. Uh, ligament venosum yeah. is closed. So but but there, there, there isn't any the uh, fibrous tissue I was not uh, the, able to identify. Mm -hmm. Anyway, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection to the left portal vein. Yeah. That is the final diagnosis. And, and then go to sinusoid and then hepatic vein. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So because that it comes to the uh, the portal vein, the pulmonary venous drainage should go to the liver, sinusoid, and then come to the hepatic vein and go to the inferior vena cava. Because the left atrium does not have any uh, the venous drainage, atrial septal defect is the only inlet uh, to the left atrium. Therefore, left ventricle is very, very hypoplastic as compared to the right ventricle. However, small left ventricle is still still forming the apex here, okay? Okay, thank you very much.